Uh, well, good morning and thank you for joining us. We talking to Pastor Thomas and Gerard from Nigel with an incredible project that they started off in, in the communities there with an orphanage and school. Um, and CBT really appreciated or actually it caught our attention on what they've achieved in job creation, feeding the community and creating a sustainable community project uh, that is enabling the community members to yeah, flourish, um, get a lot of self, self-worth, hope back into them and just delivering in, in the times that we're finding ourselves with the COVID and uncertainties, economical, need to think outside of the box. And that's exactly what CBT is all about. And community guys like Thomas and Gerard are going the extra mile. So this is one project we want to share with all of our CBT members and the future members because CBT is going to take on this project as one of our first community projects where we will sponsor uh, the startup and help them expand on the financial side and then rolling out to other communities. The, the dream and goal is to really take this to the next level and reach as many communities out there that we can. So I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Thomas to give us a bit of a background of the project, where they started from and what they've actually achieved. And then straight after Thomas will introduce Gerard, who is running the business side, because ultimately it's, this is not a, a freebie, it's still a business. And that's what we want to teach the community members, how they can become self-sustained uh, self um, by working and feeding and making an income. So yeah, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Gerard. Really appreciate your time. And Thomas, it's all over to you. Thank you, Diva. And thank you for this opportunity. Um, so about five years ago, here yeah, in our small congregation, which is at the edge of Newcastle, the 10th biggest city in South Africa, more in the, in the suburbs rather, um, we as a small congregation of which I'm the pastor went and asked, um, we wanted to address some needs in our community, but we also wanted to enable the other people who live in our suburb, who are quite well off, um, to, to get involved and to help in a sustainable and long-term way. For example, Gerard, who lives down the street, is doing exactly that now. Um, so we went and asked a lot of the NGOs and people working in the space anyway, what are the so pressing needs? And two things came up. Number one is that um, there are quite a lot of abandoned babies. And because the babies are abandoned without papers, they often nobody wants to take them in because they don't get government grants, et cetera, et cetera. And the other thing is when the kids have to leave the orphanages in our district, when they turn 18, they often end up on the street because they don't have a support network. So we thought we'd start with the first one with the babies and keep the other one in the, in the back of our minds. And uh, we, we started a temporary place of safety for these babies, up to six babies at a time that get taken care of before they get placed back into their families or rather also get... Um, place into foster or adoptive families. And we were able right next to here, next to the church where I stay also to, to rent two hectares of land with a hundred year old farmhouse on it. And so this farmhouse hosts a temporary place of safety family. And um, we, because we wanted to cover the rent and the cost also, um, we started with vegetable farming and chicken farming and pig farming on a, on a rather small scale. And we've been doing it for a couple of years now. And since about three or four months ago, a couple of businessmen from our area have sort of informally come together and started helping with whatever they sort of God has given them, money, talents, whatever. And they, Akharat was one of them. And he really pushed that, that we, we set this up, uh, that, that business people actually run the business, not a pastor, which is never a good idea. And since then, things have been gathering traction and we've been able to employ more people. And the idea is to, to, to grow it to a place where, where it can support the, the, the diaconical project financially, but also create a meaningful work through creating jobs, but also through training. And then if we have a couple of these small enterprises running, um, for example, um, hydroponic vegetables, which Gerard will talk about, um, chickens, uh, compost, 
that we can then also bring in those, those kids that have to leave the orphanages and give them an internship and train them so that they can be more employable in the long term. Uh, so that in the nutshell is what we want to do. And um, from there, I think I can give it to Gerard, who will tell you more of the figures, uh, unless you have more questions. No, that's brilliant. Sure. Just looking at your Facebook pages and the images here, that's exactly what we want to do in, in especially this time, is to enable these guys and everybody uh, in throughout South Africa and globally even, to be able to set up sustainable projects like this where they can feed themselves and also the community and generate the income th through it. Brilliant. Yes, Thanks. So, Gerard, so well, it's what has really also. become apparent to us now also, we send out a weekly list of vegetables and produce, honey and all kinds of things. And um, the people don't have as much money anymore, but they have time. So they're willing to come and buy directly from us where they would have previously only gone to the supermarket. So for us, it has been in some ways also a good experience. This with, uh, no, it's, brought us closer together as a community. Well, this is brilliant. So Gerard, what does it actually take to, or where does one start, or how do you start a community uh, project? Do you need lots of funding? Is it something that you can start on a smaller scale, or is it something, yeah, just take us through what a typical project would require to start off with. Also, Diego, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, yeah, we, like was the, Thomas said, uh, there's, a, there's various projects that we want to do, but we are going to start with hydroponics, and um, that will be the first project. And um, uh, we're busy setting it up at, as we speak, um, and uh, uh, I'm just going to run down to, through the, the, the cost structure as well as then also what, what we project to get in from it. Uh, the, the hydroponics is a, a shade cloth structure um, and it's going to cover about uh, 930 square meters which of that 630 square meters will be under growing beds. Um, if we are in full production we can uh, plant as much as 29,000 uh, plants in, 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 the, uh, in the structure. The, 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 the cost of it um, of, let me put it this way, we're going we're gonna to have to grow into it because you can't just set up 29,000 plants from the beginning. So we're going to start with 6,000 plants per month and uh, growing up to 18,000. And then, you know, you also have to have a market to sell this too. We, we, we're already in that market, but, um, you know, we, 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 this is for now the short-term goal. And then we can work from there. So up until about 18,000 plants. And based on that, um, Based on uh, what, it, what the cost of this will be, is about just underneath uh, 43,000 Rand. Now, at the moment, we use our own funding and making use of donations to, to get to that. Uh, a part of this as well is a, is a, uh, is a, wash, uh, a wash station, a pack station in a kitchen, where we obviously, as we uh, harvest the, uh, the, the leafy vegetables, which we're going to concentrate leafy vegetables and, and herbs, we're gonna have to pack it and, and, and distribute it uh, to the various uh, suppliers. Uh, the cost of that pack station is just below 19,000 Rand, which will bring the total cost of this to about uh, just below 62,000 Rand. To, to looking at the projections in terms of income, uh, <coughs> if, we are in full if we are in production of 18,000 plants after uh, three months we should do uh, we should get in per week income 34,000 rand uh, per week uh, with a cost per week of uh, uh, 16,000 which will leave us about 18,000 rand per week in income net profit um, based on that uh, and since we're starting growing into it 6,000 plants a, a month over three months it will take us our estimation is between three and four months to be able to pay this project back, uh, uh, which which we will then, after that, look into the next project and, and sure. so forth. But at the moment, in terms of cost, yeah, in, in terms of the repay period is between three and four months. No, that's absolutely brilliant. So basically what you're saying, for less than $4,000, you can set start the community up. You can start a community up with their own 
income generating uh, veggie garden or veggie hydroponics plant. And that way you've already got an offset from either the community members who buys the, the excess of the veggies or the local shops, the local shop markets um, is already purchasing that from you guys because that's the, the grade and the standard that it's handling that it's ready for shops. Now, if that's the, the situation, uh, like we discussed before, from CVT's point of view, uh, we will donate basically 50% of all the packages that comes in uh, towards this project. Then that means we only need to sell what's at eight elite packages and we can kick start uh, our first community. So that's what we're gonna do from our side. And like I told you, we're gonna take this video and we're gonna publish it to all our members and outside on our Facebook and the community members that's already following us. And then let's see, uh, either expand on your existing one or opening the next one or two or three within the next month or two uh, elsewhere. I think that okay. is where we are heading. Is there anything else that you want to show or explain some testimonies out of the, what happened, what's the, what's the mood from the people? Normally we all know we get into projects like this and we've got people standing with their hands stretched out, they just want. Um, what's the uptake in the community of actually doing the work? Do you need to pay out lots of wages or, or is the community coming together and they're actually learning? I think on lots of those pictures you saw, there were actually businesses coming and helping it uh, set up. At the moment, I think we're employing three people to do the, the, the back end sort of work, daily work. But we have members of the community coming in to help. And then we have, for example, electricians who do, do the electric side of things. We have doctors seeing the, the children uh, for free and so on. And then we have been running uh, since February is a, is a training workshop where people come and they get trained for a week in something called Farming God's Way, which teaches them to basically use stuff which God has placed in their hands uh, to, to, to at least uh, feed their families. And now during lockdown, we have a WhatsApp group there. They started posting pictures of their gardens at home. And they had said they're not only feeding their families, they're feeding all the neighbors also. So that is a very satisfying thing to see that people have, without us giving them anything in terms of seeds or fertilizer or whatever, um, using this knowledge which they gained uh, to look at what, what is around them, what is there anyway, and using that to, to, to sort of, and that's, that's much more than the food they're producing, that they're learning uh, to look at the resources which have been placed in their hands and to put them to good use. So for yeah. me, that was, that was a big thing, yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. So just by enabling and being there, uh, the community is pulling together and they're actually becoming self-sustained. Uh, we know. Yes, how I think training, is. training is a big thing. But farming training, you can tell people a lot of things. Uh, but until you actually invest it yourself and you try to do it and you make mistakes, then they think, okay, this guy is serious. So we wanted first to do it ourselves, to make the mistakes, to learn, and to show people we really invested in this, which will make it easier for them to do it. We're not just going them and telling them what to do. 